If you've made it here after watching part one of the Tinkercad tutorial series, congratulations because you're well on your way to mastering Tinkercad and all the amazing things you can do in this really, really useful CAD program. So in this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about shape manipulation. And as we go through these videos, we're going to get more and more advanced with what we do. And one thing I want to show you here is when you introduce a new object, you see how it cruises and then you could place it anywhere you please. Well, one thing I want to point out is that if you want it to just stick to the work plane because you want to enter it, let's say in the middle of this cube, what you have to do is hold down C and then cruise control is basically taken off and now you can place it wherever you see fit. All right, so let's discuss shape manipulation and what we'll do is we'll go through a lot of these different shapes and I'm going to show you the various options you have on how to modify them. So first things first, when you bring an object into view and you place it on the work plane, you're going to see this manipulation shape panel right here. There's a few things that we could do right off the bat. The first is if we went ahead and already adjusted or we like the way that a shape already is, we can lock it. This is very helpful because when you're editing other things, you cannot do anything to this shape that is locked. As you can see, I can't move it, I can't click it, I can't do nothing with it. If you want to unlock it, it's simply control L. Another helpful thing that you can do here is you can simply hide the selected item. This is going to be helpful when you're working with a lot of different shapes and you need to hide something because maybe the object behind it is what you want to start manipulating, but because it's in front of it, you can't. Now, in order to unhide the objects, you can do control shift H and that will show all of your hidden objects. So again, this light bulb right here, that's to hide the selected and to unhide control shift L. Now, before we discuss these operations here, where you can change the height, the width, the length, depending on the shape, you can modify a lot of different things. I want to cover these two sections right here. So the first is the solid. What can you do with a solid? Very, very simple. All you can really do with it is just change the color. So whatever your favorite color is, you can go ahead and select it. If you don't like any of the colors that are here, you can actually go to custom and you will be able to toggle and create any color that exists on planet Earth, which is pretty, pretty neat. Now over here, there's something called a hex code. If you're not familiar with it, every single color has a hex code. Now, lucky for you, I'm not going to be covering the hexadecimal numeral system today. However, I do want to point out this really helpful tool up here. This is an extension that you can add to Google Chrome. It is called the Color Pick Eyedropper. What this does is if I like a certain color, I can simply select this, hover over the color, and if I click my left mouse button again, I can simply copy this and then I could put this code in. So now if we go back to the color panel, I can simply paste this in. And if I hit enter, this box, as you can see, is now the same exact color as this right here. And if it doesn't appear to be that way, it's because remember this program uses shadows. If it didn't, trust me, this is the same exact color. These hex numbers, they never falter. So if we select the box again, I want to point out that we can also make it a hole. Now we're going to cover this in a different video. The point of doing solids, holes, this is more for grouping. You don't have to worry about that quite yet, but I promise you I will make a really nice tutorial probably in the next video. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Now, if you select this, you can actually make the box transparent. Why is this helpful? Well, maybe we're working on this object behind the box and they're all close together and we can't even see this shape. This will allow us to see exactly what's going on, making it transparent. I want you guys to appreciate that for a program to do this, it takes a lot of computing power. So kudos to Autodesk for creating Tinkercad and allowing everybody to use it for free. It's pretty awesome. So if we go back to this color and I deselect transparent, I want to show you this multicolor feature right here. Now, the reason that it's off is because we're only working with one item. 
However, if we had two items and let's say we made them one item by grouping them and don't worry, I'll cover grouping in a different tutorial. But as you can see, it is now one item. However, I want it to have two different colors. Well, I can actually achieve that by selecting the object clicking on the color and making it multicolor. And as you can see, it respected what the original colors were and it restored this object, even though it's now one object, it restored its original colors. Now, the next thing that I want to show you here is the actual operations that you can do to shapes. So when you select a shape, the first thing you want to do is modify these settings here. This is always best practice. Trust me on this. I've been creating for years and years, and I'll show you in a second why. So let's go ahead and make this box. Let's make the length 30, the width 25, and the height 25. And then I will click enter. What does radius do? Well, you see this sharp edge here? If we go ahead and we move this toggle over, it goes all the way to 20, and what it does is it smooths out the edge. It creates a type of bevel. Now, take a look here. I wanna show you exactly how it's doing this. So one thing I wanna point out is that this radius, it's not just a magic number that, oh, okay, if you go up in the number, then it becomes more smoother and eventually a circle. I'll explain to you exactly what's happening. If we make this four, what is happening is that the program is creating a curve that is exactly, and remember, we're working in millimeters right here. You can switch this to inches, but it is four units of whatever is chosen here. That's how far away it is from the edge, and it starts to round it. So if you don't believe me, let's zoom in, and we can see this. One, two, three, four, and afterwards, it's straight, and it does the same thing for this side as well, and it does it all around the box. Why might you do this? Well, maybe you're creating a toy for a little child, and you don't want them to cut themselves on the corners or to throw it at someone, and then that person gets hurt, so you smooth out the edges. I do this a lot in my designs. Now, what are steps? Steps is this features right here. You can think of it as how many steps there are to this radius curve. So, if we increase it it'll really smooth it out and if we decrease it it'll leave it quite jagged and this looks more like a bevel and you will see that in some of these object selections they actually refer to it as a bevel for instance if I drag out this cylinder you'll see that over here they refer to it as a bevel and if you're not sure what a bevel is I pulled it up on Merriam-Webster dictionary and I just thought that this was hilarious because look at this picture Marion Webster should recreate a bevel on Tinkercad and then put it as the picture because this is ridiculous this looks like 1965 stuff come on Marion Webster get with it so before I go further and I'll show you how to manipulate them and why some of these are black and some of these selections are white right here there's an important distinction but before I do that I want to point something out I want to go back and tell you why it is always important to go ahead and modify your shape using this shape manipulation panel before you do it here because what happens is if we went and rotated the shape and again if you're unfamiliar with how to rotate I covered that in the previous tutorial so this is Tinkercad tutorial number one where I covered exactly how to rotate objects and now I'll show you why it's really really important to go ahead and specify the length width and height in the panel versus here because if we look here and we take a look at the height and the length you will see that it is no longer 30 or 25 it's telling us that the length is actually 43.5 but that's definitely not the case the reason it's showing that is because it is measuring it from here to here and it's no longer treating this as a side see it's showing it as like 43.5 by 32.17 however if we go back here we can still be able to modify it so if i make it a hundred you will actually see that it went ahead and modified it. So this is why this panel is very, very important. Now, what's also great is that when you point to anywhere on this cube, it goes ahead and tells us the exact measurement. So if I wanted to make it taller, I can simply click 
on this white box and drag it up. And right here, it tells us exactly how tall it is. And then I could specify, you know what? I actually want it to be 40 millimeters tall. Now, these bottom ones, it's the same thing. I can drag it out, I could drag it in. Now, I want you to pay attention right here. You see how there's white and black selection options? This is because they are designated by if it's changing multiple things or just one thing. So for instance, if I select this black and I click and press it, and then I move my mouse to one direction or the other, it's just changing one thing. It's changing the width. So it now changed it to 42, it's going back to 29. However, if I select one of these white ones, it is changing multiple dimensions. It is now changing the length and the width. And that is the distinction of why it is black and why it is white in some areas. Remember, the cone is just to lift it up and down off the ground. And again, we can specify exactly how high up off the ground we want to lift it. And remember, if you select any object, you press D, it will drop back down to the work plane. Okay, so this part is also very important. I want you to imagine that this edge right here this surface is glued to something. And so you don't want to, when you expand this box, for it to expand on both sides. And so if you go in here and you specify, let's say we move this to 40, you'll see that it went and its axis was the middle and it expanded this way and to the left and to the right to make it 40. However, if you don't want it to do that and you just want it to do it on one side, you simply just drag one side. Now, if you want it to expand about the middle, like let's say this was a centerpiece of an object and you want it to expand on both sides so that the object will remain symmetrical, what you can do is you can hold down the Alt key or Option if you're using a Mac, and then you drag. And as you can see, it scales about the center. This is very, very useful. Trust me, when you're designing, you're gonna have to do this. Now, what happens if you don't want it to just scale this way, but you want it to scale up as well and all remain relative to one another? Well, you can hold down Shift and it will uniform scale. This is also very helpful because it is keeping all of the sides, all of the measurements relative to one another ratio wise as you go ahead, shift click and then drag out. This is also very, very helpful for you to know how to do. So now let's take a look at some of these other cool options that we have. So this right here is a ring. What you can do with this ring is you can actually change the shape. I want you to understand that what's happening here is it's taking this line in the center and it's just rotating around it and creating this shape right here. If it's confusing for you what I mean, I just want you to imagine that you sketched this out and then what's going to happen with this is it will revolve 360 degrees around this point here and create an item. Let me show you exactly how that works. If I stretch this side out and I bring this side in, you see how it looks like a moon shape? Now take a look at what's happening here. You see how now we're achieving that moon shape? So all that's happening is this moon shape right here, or boomerang, it actually looks more like a boomerang. That's a definitely a better description for it. This boomerang is just revolving around this center point right here and creating a ring with this exact shape. And we can modify this shape however we please, which is amazing. Again, automatically it adjusts. So now let's take a look at what this object does. And it's good to remember stuff from previous tutorials. So again, we can select this fit view to select its shapes and it's gonna zoom in on it and we'll be able to see it perfectly. Now over here, it's giving us a radius option. So this is gonna be how big the torus is. We can select the girth of the actual tube. We can select the amount of sides. Remember, it's gonna smooth it out versus it looking very, very jagged. And the amount of steps that will further smooth it out. So if we select it all the way, this now looks like you can sit in the middle of it and start snow tubing. Now let's take a look at the text. So again, I'm gonna go fit to view. And now let's discuss text. So text, you can actually just type in whatever you want. So for me, I will type in the name of my company, promo ambitions. I will select it once again and I will fit it to view so that we can see it. 
Chrome Ambitions. Now, the cool thing is you can change the font to whatever you desire. You can change the height of it. You can change the bevel of it, the segments. And remember, that should, in theory, smooth it out. Let's see if it did. Yeah, it does look like it smoothed it out. So again, if you're creating something that toddlers or kids are gonna be playing with, you definitely wanna smooth out edges. And sometimes it just looks cool, like versus rough edges, smooth edges just look cool. So I'll go ahead and delete that. I'll select the home so that we could go back. Let's take a look at this tube right here. And this is something similar to what we were looking at before. This kind of looks like a toilet paper roll almost. We can make it a lot sides. We can also add a bevel to it to smooth it out. And there's so many of these different shapes. The last one that I wish to show you because it's really, really cool is this squiggly one right here. So check this out. Now, whatever you draw, so in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a thumbs up because that's something I am hoping that you will do on this video. And once I'm done with it, check this out. It actually created it. And you can also like sign your name. So let's say I wanted to do like EK. Wow, I'm doing a pretty bad job here, but if you can actually write in cursive, I'm starting to forget cursive, it's sad. It's sad we don't use cursive anymore. But anyways, if you're done with this, you simply select done and it actually created your scribble. And the only thing you can do here is just adjust the height. Now for some of these, you can't really do anything with it. For instance, if we bring this object out here, there's really nothing we could do with this diamond, which is hilarious. It's just a diamond. The only thing that we could do is just manipulate the height, length, width, but it doesn't give us any options of what to do in the shape manipulation panel, which is really interesting. So I just want to point out that on my website, I went ahead and created this resource right here. This is Tinkercad tutorial, full guide tips and tricks. I think I'm going to change it to ultimate guide tips and tricks. Once I am done with all six, seven or eight videos, I might even make nine videos this time around. And I will keep this original OG set at the bottom. You can see all the keyboard shortcuts and I will include a lot of helpful information. So keep your eye on the page promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad. And I created yet another resource called Tinkercad Competency Assessment Exercises. This is gonna help educators teach their students or if you're someone that just wants to test your knowledge and you wish to go ahead and put your skill set to the test and see if you can accomplish all of these tasks. This is a great way to learn because there is an assessment involved. And I'll also build upon this resource right here and make it more updated for what Tinkercad is now. But I'll only do that after I'm done with these seven, eight or nine videos. It's going to be a lot of work. So if you're an educator and you appreciate it, definitely consider donating and you could see the two links on both of the resources. I hope that you guys appreciated this content. I hope you learned something. I'm looking forward to continuing to make these tutorials and to give back because 3D printing has been amazing for me. Thanks to 3D printing, I've been able to supplement my income by creating and selling a lot of 3D prints. And I also teach a lot of workshops at a lot of local libraries here in North Jersey, New York City, even Pennsylvania. So if you're interested in me coming to your school or coming to your gifted school program or anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can send me an email through the website. I hope that you guys learned something today and I will see you all in the next video.